Welcome back everybody, Irish Eyes here, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm in Killarney, County Kerry, and I'm here to visit Killigy Old Cemetery and Church Ruins in beautiful Killarney in County Kerry. So I'm going to show you around. So this is Killigy Old Graveyard in County Kerry. Look at all those mountains over here. There's a better view of the landscape. Absolutely amazing to look at. So I'm going to take you inside the old graveyard now, guys. That's what we're here for today. And I'm going to see how I can get in here. Hi guys, so I'm here in Killigy Old Graveyard in Killarney, as I was saying. We're going to look around and there's some amazing vaults in this graveyard. This is one here I'm just going to show you. And we'll read this. In the vault beneath lie the mortal remains of John Leahy. JP of South Hill, born 1770, died in 1846, and of his eldest son, John Leahy. And it looks like QC of South Hill and died in 1874. And of Matilda Emma, widow of John Leahy, QC. The memory of the just is blessed. And isn't that just a stunning looking vault? And the monument on top of the vault here. And just down below, we'll have a look down here at the door entrance of the vault and see what we can find. And there's the steps. There's the steps down into the vault, the Leahy vault. And what a fine vault it is. Just look at those steps and monument on top. I've seen stuff like this in Mount Jerome in Dublin as well. And there's the Leahy vault. So I'm going to have to come back to that and take the phone off the gimbal and give you a better look inside there because it is well worth having a look. And you can see the two vaults, one here on the right and one here on the left. This is the other vault. I want to have a look at this one, see what we can see. Is there any names on this one or anything? It's a quite large vault. And there was something here on the top that's missing. Now that could have been an urn or some kind of a design on top of that that's missing. The writing is on top of this one here, so it's going to be hard to try and read it, but I'll try. As you can see, I have to be careful. And it says Charles Herbert, 1820. And Winifred Rutledge, 1869. That's another vault. So it looks like guys, for this one, I'm going to try and leave this until later on in the video as well because um, I'll have to take the phone off the gimbal to have a better look. You can see the little handle there in the middle of it, the round metal ring and it looks like all that was maybe being able to be pulled out maybe or something. But this is an amazing graveyard, very old, a lot of history connected here to this graveyard with Muckross, the famous Muckrock Muckross, sorry, house. And there's an, another monument. And this old building here was an old church. And look at all the vines in it. 
and it's actually a mortuary chapel where they used to hold the bodies until burial, I believe. And you can see the door entrance there of it is very, very old, but absolutely stunning to look at. And it's all overgrown. You can see the top of it there where it's all overgrown and that used to be the old part of the, maybe the bell tower and it. But it was turned into a mortuary chapel. So let's go in and have a look inside. And just in the middle of the floor, you see a big white cross that was made with white little stones. And um, very, very old. You see the altar there and the old window at the back. And it's all whitewashed, like paint. They whitewashed all the inside. And it looks absolutely beautiful. So it's an old mortuary chapel. And there's a plaque on the wall over here. I want to have a read of the plaque. This church of Kilogy was built as a family mortuary chapel by Morris Hussey of Cahernane, late colonel in the army of King James II. At his death in 1714, his body was born here by his four sons and buried at midnight by torchlight. Wow. His death in 1714 and his body was born here by his four sons and buried at midnight by torchlight. So they buried this man at midnight with torches back in the 1700s. How amazing is that? And there's an old, you can see a wheelbarrow there and I'm sure that just that's just left there for um, the groundkeeper, the maintenance man who looks after the place. But look at that old window and all the old stone, an old mortuary chapel from the 1700s. And a man was buried here at midnight by torchlight, imagine. So let's go back outside now, guys, and we'll read more old monuments. This graveyard is surrounded by the hillside of Killarney, and I'll try and show you a better look at that as well. And I'm showing you this one here is erected by Joseph Antidia D. Onions, very unusual name, in memory of their beloved child, Amy Lydia, who died at Killarney, 1873. And I don't see an age on it or anything, but it has this rusty look and feature to it. And see the white lichen is on it as well. And this part of it here, you can see, is just a metal plate that's been put onto the side of it. And the old mortuary chapel there in the background as well. And they're all railings around the grave. Look at the gold and the black painted railings going all the way around this. Amazing. And it's, there's a lot of vaults here, guys, in this graveyard. But there's a high cross in this graveyard, and I believe it's the biggest Celtic cross in the whole of Ireland. I've never seen anything like it. I believe the cross is maybe, I would say the cross would be at least 40, 50 feet tall. And it overlooks the hillside of Killarney and Muckross House. And here's another marble monument here with a, an iron railing around it. And it's hard to read with the light. But I think it says to the memory of Lieutenant General Weston.
wakings or walkings. And it's hard to see a date. It's kind of faded away, 22nd of July. And the date is kind of faded off it, but it says Lieutenant General. Look at all those big trees around this old graveyard. I just love these old graveyards. And this one says here, to the memory of Frederick Bress, B-R-E-E-S-E, -E -E, born 23rd, February the 23rd, died July the 9th, 1863. You can see it here in that. Also, P.J. Bress, born 1865 and died in 1866, so only a year old. Also, Harry, born in 1870 and died in 1871, not lost, but gone before. So there's two one-year-old children buried at this grave. It's very sad. Two small little children. And look at this one here. This is another crypt. Or vault, I should say. And there's a, a monument at the top. I'm going to try and read what it says. Sacred to the memory of Robert Robinson, CE, who died at Killarney. And over there, I think it's 1859, age 62 years old. So it's Robert Robinson, CE. And I'm not sure what CE means, but I'm sure you guys can tell me in the comments. And there's the steps down into it, or all the leaves. And look at that big old rusty door going into the vault. And it's very, very low. It's about two foot high, it's a two or three foot high, this vault. And that's definitely one, guys, for the, for the gimbal as well. I'll have to take the gimbal, sorry, the phone off the gimbal to have a look at that one. And there's another tomb here. And the top, the lid off the tomb seems to be moved a bit. But it's, it doesn't seem to be anything in there, only leaves. The body was well buried underneath the ground. This is just the top part of it. So we'll keep going around. And as I said, we'll get back to those vaults and definitely have a look inside those vaults because I did see a coffin inside. And look at this lovely one here with the gold and the black colors and railing around it. And this is in memory of John Martin, late of Killarney, who departed this life, 1885. This residence, Dublin, age 70, something years old, it's faded off of there. And also his sister, Mary Martin, who died in 1877, age 60. And of his sister-in-law, Lithia Cather Denny, who died in 1868, age 30. And of Ada Francis, or Ada Francis Martin, who died in 1888, aged 23 years old. And that's a beautiful headstone there. And it's a very American looking, this headstone. You can see it's kind of very thick in size. The headstone, look at the width of it there, and the designs on it. So guys, I'm going to take you up and show you this 
You can see it in the background there actually, the high Celtic cross. And that Celtic cross is absolutely enormous. Look at this old railing around this one here, the headstone. We'll read this. In loving memory. And it looks like Jane, maybe. Lowing, is, I think, is the name. 1862. There's a lot of these are faded and hard to read, but isn't that a beautiful headstone? Look at the design on that. And the orange lichen colours on it. So there's a lot of people buried here connected to Muckross House and the history of Muckross. Here's another monument. Sacred to the memory of Elizabeth. Late of the late John Leahy, JP of South Hill in his county died 1864, March 1864. So it's to the memory of Elizabeth. Relict of the late John Leahy, JP of South Hill, 1864. And there's a big area here as well. And we'll read these. In loving memory of Major Francis Lionel Hewson of Flesk, Killarney and Doreen Kinmare died in 1916 and there's a saying on this and I'm going to see can I read it if I just take off this stuff off it here and have a look because it's interesting to read and it says round about round about the Thou rulest the raging of the sea when the waves there of arise. Thou stillest them. Sam. And that's a Sam from the Bible, I believe. And there's loads of names on that. But it's a very, it's just a a big burial area here with stone slabs on top of it. There's an obelisk one. We've seen these before in videos as well. With the old, look at the moss on it. One side by side here. And the Celtic cross in the background. And I might be able to read this one beside it a bit better. In remembrance of Colin Maher, who died suddenly at Muck Ross, of Laura Broughton, Manchester he was from, who died suddenly at Muck Ross while on a tour, 1860, and was here interred aged 23 years old. So Colin Maher died suddenly while on tour, it says, aged only 23 years old in 1860. How very young to die, suddenly, 23 years old. Rest in peace, Colin. And there's a lovely marble one here. And a lot of them ha have them of these graves have these gold and black colour railings around them. I see a lot of those. 
this is an old marble one. I'm just going to try and read. In remembrance of George Ross, of Muck Ross, who died 8th of December 1874, age 66 years old. And it's all marble here. And there's a cross on top of it. It's a beautiful, beautiful monument. And here's another marble one. Mary Ann, wife of Robert M. Hillard of Killarney, died in 1896, age 40 years old. Also, Ellie M. Hillard Elsie, died 1921, age 28 years old. Robert Martin, JP, died 1931, age 82 years old. And it's a Celtic cross, a marble Celtic cross. So guys, I'm going to try and make my way up this area of the graveyard over here and show you some more amazing gravestones. And you can see all the lovely yellow daffodils are blooming. And the weather is gorgeous here today. And this graveyard is absolutely stunning here. All those daffodils. And this is a rather large vault here. Look at the steps down into that. It's an old railing around it and steps down in. You can see how far it goes down. And I want to try and read the names that's on that. In memory of Captain Charlie James Herbert, late of Grenadier, I think it is, August 1891, and of Helen Jane, his wife, died in 1882. And at that monument on top, you can see the vault there with the door of the vault and the steps down into it, and this is up on the very top of it. And it says Charlie and the two little crosses here, the marble cross. One says Charlie and the other one says Helen, husband and wife. What a beautiful final resting place and monument they made. Stunning looking vault. And here's another area down here this is absolutely massive and i believe guys that this vault here with all these steps down into it and the big big iron door down there is all connected to this celtic cross now this has to be the biggest celtic cross i've ever seen on my travels around Ireland, cemeteries and graveyards. I've never seen a Celtic cross. And as I said before earlier in the video, this Celtic cross is at least, at least 50, if not more feet tall. It's the biggest Celtic cross I've ever seen. And we're going to go over and have a read of it. And just look at the size of that Celtic cross. Absolutely enormous. And the knots on it and all the designs on it. Look at the size of that cross. That's the biggest cross I've ever seen. And it overlooks the hills of Killarney and Muckross House. And it says, in affection, in affectionate memory of the Right Honourable Henry Arthur Herbert, born 1815, died 1866. His tenantry have erected this cross to record their sense 
of his virtue and their grief for his loss. So they've erected this cross for Henry Arthur Herbert. And I don't know if you'll pick it up on the video, but when you're standing beside this cross, it's just amazing to look at and how big it is. And look at the hills of Killarney in the background. And that just gives you some description of how big that Celtic cross is. And what a final resting place for Henry Arthur Herbert. As you can see, I can walk around the edge of the cross here. It's so big. And at the back of the cross, there's this beautiful scenery. The mountains of Killarney and the lakes and mountains of Killarney in the background. And he really picked a final resting place. You couldn't pick one any better, I don't think. It's just amazing here in this graveyard. So peaceful. And the scenery is absolutely stunning as well. And there's more writing on the back of it here, guys. I want to read. And I think it just says the same as what's on the front of it. But look at all that detail on it. Celtic cross. There's Serenity Sue in the background looking into a vault. And I'm going to try and get around to those vaults and uh, hopefully we'll be able to show you what's inside of them. Well, there's the Celtic Cross, the biggest Celtic Cross in Ireland, I believe, or maybe one of the biggest in Ireland. And it is absolutely amazing. And that's his vault over there where Sue is standing and the steps down into it. And I'm going to get down there. Hopefully we'll be able to have a look in it. And I'll just read this one over here. This is just a big stone. And it says, Toby, Keith, Tobias, Burnett, Hod, born the 4th of October, 1945, and died in July. 2000 and that's a very unusual looking headstone and it's the resting area here with just stones all around it and there's a, a star or a sun on the top of it there designed like the sun and it does say something here all in right nothing in the world can take the place Talent will not. Nothing is more common than on men with talent. And I'd love to be able to read that. If I find anything online, guys, about this person, I will put it up when I'm editing the video. So we're going to go over and have a look now at the, the vault of Henry Arthur Herbert, who died in 1866. And that huge Celtic cross overlooking the Killarney Mountains. And this is his final resting place here in the vault. And Sue has gone down before me. She's probably excited to see this as well. That's a big, big drop down there with those stairs. So I'm going to take my time and go down here and be careful. It's what? It's a bit slippy with the moss and stuff. But look at the size of the steps down into this. Imagine the work it took to build this vault. And that big Celtic cross, about 50 feet tall it is. And that's inside the vault. I don't know, can I see anything in there? Oh, there is. Oh, there's lead coffins in there, guys. 
So it looks like Mr. Arthur or Herbert is interred in here. Now I'm going to take the phone off the gimbal so I can have a better look. So guys, this is the vault here where we came. And I'll just show you behind me. There's the stairs that leads down into the vault and goes back up there up into the graveyard. So I'm going to look in this side first and hopefully I'll be able to show you and focus the camera. And there's one lead coffin there you can see on a shelf and it's all designed inside the vault like red brick. You can just see the, the lead coffin on the shelf. And there's another one then the other side. There guys, you can see the coffin and you can see the metal, the studding, the studs around the coffin. That is the coffin of the man interred here in the vault where you see in the big high Celtic cross. Or it's one of those coffins, I believe. And it could be this one because it does look like he would be interred in this one. Because it does look um, different to the other ones that's in there. There's more detail on them. You can see the end of the coffin just there. And it's sitting on a shelf. The wooden shelves, they're all in the wooden shelves, the coffins. And I don't know what else is in there, but you can see the ground. Down on the ground there as well, you can see the white, um, I don't know what they are. They're like from, there's something over there on the left actually, if I just look over there on the ground, is there anything there to look at? There's a piece of the coffin there guys in the ground. I'm just going to see, can I show you? There's one piece of the coffin that has broken away. Now the lead coffin is always, the coffins are always made where the wood is built around the lead coffin. So there's actually two layers. There's the, the lead coffin and the timber that goes around it. And that's a piece that came off the end of the coffin on the ground down there. You can just see it. And it's broken away in time. And is there another one over on the other side? It's all empty. Are they empty? Yeah, it's all shelving. The shelving here as well on the right hand side, but they look like they're empty. You can see them all there, there's no coffins in them. So maybe they were thinking they would be there for other members of the family. Oh, there were candles on the ground, the white things that are sticking up. Are they? I think they were candles, yeah. I can see wax. Oh, there's actually wax there, guys. You can see, do you see the white on the ground? There are candles. So I'm just wondering, did people maybe get in here and maybe have some kind of a ritual or something in this vault, like maybe lighting candles and stuff? There's more on the floor there. But I do see all that on the walls as well. So I'm not sure, is it candles or is it like... Candle drops from drops from the sea, you know, like you have in caves, is it stalagmites. stalagmites, they look like. And you can see them up in the wall there as well. They're all white on the wall. There's a bee there now, be careful. There's a bee in the vault, guys. You can see them just there. They're probably nesting in there. And is that Mr. Herbert, maybe, in the afterlife, mm. reincarnated? He's inside the vault. So that's the vault. Now, I just focus the camera. So we're going back out now, myself and Sue, and we're going to go over around and look and try and see into the other vaults that's in the area. No. 
So that was the vault there of Henry Arthur Herbert. And he was connected to Muckross House in some way as well. And that's the steps down into the vault where I just showed you the coffins down there, the lead coffins. So it goes all the way back in here. And that's the monument, the Celtic Cross. At least 50, I'd say, is it? 50 feet. Now I'm going to get Sue to stand beside the Celtic Cross over there, just to give you an idea of how big it actually is. So Sue is, how high are you? Five, five. She's five foot five. So that will give you an idea of how tall that Celtic Cross is overlooking the mountains in Killarney. A stunning high cross. And there it is again, the Celtic Cross. Amazing. So I'm going to bring you over here, guys, and show you. There's another vault here. And this is the one for Charlie and Helen. It says on those crosses. And there's an old railing, a rusty railing around it. So we're going to go down this one as well. There's a number of vaults here to look at. So I'm sure we're going to see a lot. And there's all leaves. And look at that old door. Look, an old rusty iron door that's been shut for a long, long time. There's some writing on it there. But let's have a look inside. I think. Does you see it? An old wooden coffin and there's flowers left on top of it. Where the light is shining there. It's an old wooden coffin left in the corner of the vault. And someone has left flowers on top of it. And I can't see. To see I can't seem to see anything else. There. There's another one on the other side as well. Just to the right of it. There's another coffin there. And there's a plaque on top of that coffin, so it probably says the name of the person that's interred. You can see the metal plate on top of the coffin. And that coffin is old and it's broken up looking as well. And I'm going to see, can I get a look in this way? Maybe just there you can see the coffin. It's broken away. So there's two coffins in here and that's the husband and the wife. Helen, I think, and Charlie. It says on the monument above. Are interred here. So I'm going to get Sue to look down, there's holes down the bottom here. So I'm going to see, will that do any, will that be any better looking in? That seems to be better there now. See the lead coffin on the floor of the vault. There's the lead coffin on that side. There's the other one down on the floor and there's flowers left on top of that one. So I'm just going to guess and say that the one here on the left is the wife and the one on the right is the husband. With the flowers on it is the wife, I'd say. The flowers for the lady. And that's the coffin on the left 
and we've seen the other one on the right side of the vault. And there's those old flowers, a wreath of flowers, of flowers left on top of the coffin. And and the white static night coming down from the ceiling of the vault as well, from dampness and through time. So let's go back up, guys, and see what else is around this old graveyard in Killarney. It's just full of old headstones and vaults, small Celtic crosses, and lovely graves. We'll go over and read this grave over here first, will we? And we'll go over and read the vaults in. I just want to look at this one here with the flowers in it. I'm just going to go over to have a read of these headstones over here with all the flowers. Look at all those beautiful daffodils that's grown in the graveyard. And they're all surrounding this grave. This one says, in loving memory of Grace Hazelhurst who died 1966, age 73. And the old railing around that one, with the cross. Look at all those lovely daffodil flowers. And they're all going around in a ring, all around the grave, covering it. Isn't that beautiful to see? And I don't know, that it's amazing the way they just grew in the formation all around the grave like that and surrounding the whole grave and the Celtic cross and it says John Richard Leahy looks like died September or sorry December 1921 aged 74 years old and I just love all those beautiful daffodil flowers look at that There's more over this direction. William Boyle, Muckross Road, Killarney, died November 1988, aged 88 years old, and his wife Mary died in 2002, aged 86 years old. And just look at this one here. Arthur Rose Vincent CBE and that must be another title CBE 1876 to 1956 Derry Vincent 1896 to 1988 and there's a design on top of it if I can get over there to show you There's a design on top of it. I'm not sure is that a horse's head or something. But the name is there. Vincenti Dabature. I've never come across that name before. It's some kind of an animal. I'm not sure what it is. And there's a crown underneath it. It's a lovely headstone and design on it. And it's the same. And all this old tree here has just come down and it's like it's taken over the grave. Just hanging over the grave area here, this old tree. And look at all those Celtic crosses. All the orange lichen and the crosses and the headstones. And that's the other headstone of the family here, Arthur William, born Vincent, 1919 to 2012. And they're lovely headstones. So I'm going to take you around, guys, and have a look at a few more. And this one has a Christmas wreath on it and some lovely 
flowers growing on top of it. In loving memory of Georgine and Mary Carson, called home on the 9th of June 2010, and her husband William Thomas Carson died on the 26th of May 2018. So I'm going back over, guys, to Jane Serenity Sue. And I'm going to take you back over to those vaults that I said I'd get back and try and look inside them. And there's just an old rusty railing. And it's a grave site, but I don't see any name or anything on that. You can hear the birds singing again. Lovely summer's day here. There's those tombs again. No crypt vault. And this one is not as far to go down. There's only two steps on this one to go down. The other one went down further. We were visiting. And look at the old door, and it's an old rusty iron door. So it's a small area to get down into, but we're going to have a look and see. And there's the monument up over it. And have a look. And there's some more leaves here that I'm going to remove so I might be able to see better. I'm just trying to focus the phone. There's a coffin there. There's a coffin there, you can see it in the corner. It's broken as well. I think that's all. And I think, is that all that's in there? I think so. There's one down in the corner there as well. You see the handle of it there? The coffin where the light is shining now. Oh, there's loads broken down at the There's loads of broken yeah. coffins. They look like they've all turned over or something. And you can see the handle on it, of the coffin. I don't know if there's any bones, I can't see anything, can you? No. Maybe down in the floor area. And you can see the two handles, the coffin has fallen over on its side. Look at the old door. And the big old handle that used to went, the bar that used to go across the door of it. And I've read that name earlier and showed you the name that's on that one. Look at this one here, it's all stone. Very old looking one. And a slab on top. And I won't get to read any names on that, I think it's, it's way too old. And there's that mortuary chapel I was showing you with the plaque on the wall where it said a man was buried here at midnight by torchlight in the 1700s. And this place is covered in old monuments, vaults. And there's a really old crypt in here. Look at this one, it's covered in moss. Kind of come away from it, huh? And there's a door in it, or sorry, a stone piece of big piece of stone with a ring handle on it like it was just but it's not covered fully it seems to be look it's like after falling, I'd say. it's after falling but I doubt there's something in there now I'd say it's we'll have a look inside removed. wow guys that's a skull I'm just going to Look at the skull. There is one. There is one skull. Right. And over on the other side, there, there 
Ik hoor die ei zag het. Oh my god. Die ei zag het. Must be very old. The old skull. That is very, very old. It's kind of. And it does look like to me that it could be a child because it's a very small skull. It doesn't look like a, a an adult size skull. Coffin debris or. I don't see any coffins. You know, it's, is it one of those ones? Where no, it sh- could be like the one that Sue did in um, Limerick. Oh, there is a vertebrae there. I can see where my torch is going up there from the skull there. This whole body is there. God help them. You can see the bones there, guys. The whole shape of the body. So I wouldn't think. It's just there. You can see all the spinal cords, the spine. And the bones and the skulls all there, look. That's so sad. So sad. The whole skeletal body is there. It's all rubble inside. There doesn't see I think they would have been left. I think they would have been buried down further. I don't I don't know because Or this clay seems to have moved away from it. I can just see the full body there and it's just so sad. You can see the it's skull like over the skull. other side as well. There's oh. that skull on the other side of it. But you can't see any body or bones on that side. But on this side here, you can see... You can nearly see like the the, the whole shape yeah, of the body. Down to the pelvis. Down to the pelvis area. You can see there, I think is the pelvis area where my finger is. That's what I believe. And the bones and all there. That's very old. There's nothing dated on this that I can see. I don't see any names on it or anything like that. But that's where we were. Looking in that hole there where you seen the skulls and the remains in there. It's all moss and grass on top. What's that? The whole roof is gone. Sue is saying. That was the roof area, and it was just like it was made of stone. And you can see down into it. And there's one of the bones, guys, down there, look. We're looking in from the top part of this crypt. There's one of the bones, just there you can see the bones and we're looking in from the top part of it there's no coffins in there i don't see any coffins so maybe back so i'd say that could be even the 15 or 1600s in shrouds. they were buried in shrouds and there was no coffin or anything like that because even the crypt itself the burial area looks very old it's just all put together with stone and it's built up around really of any kind. no so guys there's the old mortuary chapel. So there's another vault over here. I want to go down and have a look at that one. See the stones and there's the ones I've read. See the stones painted. And the stones are all painted, yeah. We'll go over and have a look at those stones. People have painted on the stones here in the graveyard. Green crosses and orange hearts. And a few of the stones. And you can see them here as well. Look at the orange heart. The green colours, the green crosses and the orange hearts, like the Irish colours. And I don't know, what is that, I think they could be markers. Or people could be interred there with markers. And people have just painted them. And probably just to make them look more beautiful looking than just having an ordinary marker stone. They made it nicer looking by painting these crosses and love hearts on them and it's a beautiful idea there's the old tree 
they've seemed to do that in a few areas around there as well you see all the stones have been painted green paint on them and here's an old one on the ground this tomb was erected William and it's hard to see the name on it and it's all faded away there's another green stone there so we're going to, I'm going to have a look at this vault. This is the one I was reading earlier. The vault of John Leahy, JP. So we're going to go down and have a look inside this vault. And the wind is picking up a bit now today because we're up near the mountains as well. And look at the steps down into this one. 1866 it says on the door going in. Like Mount just have Jerome. Mount Jerome, yeah, with the ground doors, much very like them as well up in Dublin. So it says on it here, Family Vault of John Leahy, QC of South Hill, 1866. And there's the old handle on the door, look. And there's a few cobwebs on it, but I'm gonna have a look in and see. Not sure what we're going to find. There is coffin. Now you can see a coffin there, guys. You see it? Quite large, the think. top of the coffin has broken in, like caved in on the top part of it. And I'd say it's probably just through weather and dampness and everything like that that they don't last. They just break away in time. You can see it all broken there on the top and the handles on the side of it. And it's probably a lead coffin. It's probably just timber on the outside and lead on the inside where we can't see the lead. And we've more on the, the ground there, we've more, I think there's another bit to the left. You can see on the ground. Not moving. There. See the, there's something. There's something down there in the corner. I'd say. It's probably a coffin that has broken. See the concrete slab on the ground where it was left on. And see the red brick as well. They're all designed with the red brick inside the vaults. And I see, can I get a better view? There's the coffin there now. You can just see the coffin there, the handle on it. Now that's it there with the light. Oh, no. That's the coffin there, guys, in the vault. Not so that's the best view we're going to get of that. So back up. We'll go up the steps of this vault and look at the size of the steps. Big stone steps down into it. There's one next door as well. We'll have a look at that one. And there's the gate where we came in and the road goes all the way back down over there, back onto the main road. And this is another vault. And all the leaves have fallen down into this as well, down the steps. And I don't know what those big rings are on those vaults. Is that like the, that part of the vault was, was you, you might have been able to pull that out, that area of it. Or is it just a design maybe? But I'm gonna see, can I see a name on it? Arthur, it looks like, I can see a name there, Arthur. It's hard to read it. It's kind of faded on it. Yeah, 18 something there with the torches. 18. 1860 something is on the date there. There's an art. 1800, 1860 something there on it. Yeah. You can see. Everything else is. Just Everything about else gone. is all, yeah, faded away. We'll go down and have a look at this one, guys. The handle is different on this one. Now, there's a piece here in the ground, I don't That's know. That's from the top of it. That's from the top. It's like an urn. An urn that has fallen off the top of it up there. Has come down here in front of the vault. And you can see it. Look at just the urn on it. You can see the top of the urn. There's all the designs in it. And all the leaves have taken over it. 
And this is a black door on this one. The urn has fallen from the top yeah. down inside the entrance of the vault. Wow, guys, the coffins in here and they're very far down looking. Look at these ones. Yeah. And there, you can see, there's one coffin. They're about five or six feet or more yeah, yeah. from the entrance door of the vault below. I think there's about three or four. There's three or four. There now. There's one in the middle. There's one on the left of it, and it looks like it's in better condition. The handles are very strong. It actually looks like a casket. It looks very American looking. Yeah, actually, I think you're right. I think it's in a casket, like an American style casket. It seems like, isn't it? So guys, I'm going to leave the video there and uh, thanks for coming on the walk with me around Killigy Old Historical Graveyard in Killarney, County Kerry. So for me and Serenity Sioux in Killarney, County Kerry, in the beautiful mountain area, take care. God bless, and I'll see you all on the next one.